Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Supply. I've come to the realization that I am notorious for taking the most simple project ideas and blowing them up. So let's do that again. How about a chessboard or a checkers board? Now we could cut a square, we could drop in some scribe lines, maybe a little paint, or we could go all in. See what I'm talking about? Right, so anything I use in this video, weaverleathersupply.com or check below. We've got links there, going to take you straight to the website. Also, if you want to know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. So let's step over to our pattern table. Let's get started. The one problem we don't have to worry about in Leathercraft, a lack of options. So many ways we can go here. The big point, make this your own. So on our board, we're going to go with two by two inch squares. Now officially in the U.S., we want a square size of two to two and a half inches. Now, played chess my whole life. Did not realize there's a correlation between the size of our square and the height of our king. So two to two and a half inches, we want a king height of three and three quarter to four and a half inches. Internationally, we want a square size of five to six centimeters and a king height of nine and a half centimeters. So for our board, we're gonna go with two inch squares. Let's take a look at our pattern. So we're going to cut a board, we'll talk about that, 18 by 18 inches, and we're going to come in one inch all the way around as a border. So we're going to use two inch squares. We need eight across, eight up and down, so that's our 16 inches there. Now, options, so many ways to go. We're going to go with our suede simply because we've got so many beautiful colors. Now, we could just take a large piece of leather, chrome or veg, on the veg, we could scribe in lines, swivel cut lines. The only problem I have there is without an airbrush, it's impossible to get good clean lines with either dye or paint. So we're gonna cut our squares. Now we could absolutely just lay in a border of, any, of, of either of the two colors. That's beautiful and very clean, but we're leather crafters. We're not gonna go with that, right? How about we stamp a border, dye that, Maybe say a walnut or mahogany, that is going to be beautiful. That's the route we're going. But other options, I know I'm on a roll here. You'll see where I'm going with this. So first off, we could go with veg tan squares, and we could always drop in some kind of cool little border stamp or corner stamp. That would look good. Here's one of my favorites, and I really want to make a board with this. Let's do a floral stamp in all four corners. Very classic look. Here's the problem. We need 64 tiles. Well, times eight stamps, that's a lot of stamps, but also one more. And we've got to talk about this because I love the filigree cut. How about we drop in a filigree cut on all four sides? How about a little stamp design in each corner? That is beautiful. I've got to make a board like that, but we're not going to do that one in the video. Okay, so we've got a good feel for what we're talking about. Let's jump over to our main table, cut some leather. Let's start with our suede. Now on these squares, we're going to have to cut these as clean and accurately as we can. These are going to work into a grid pattern. So first step, let's take a piece of suede, sharp knife or new knife every time. Let's cut a straight edge in this. Now, I've got a two inch straight edge here. Let's bring that right to the edge of our cut and let's cut strapping. Basically, we're gonna need 64 tiles. We need 32 in each color. So let's cut two or three straps here and we'll start cutting the squares out. Good, we've got three cuts. Now, these are about 28, 29 inches long. So that's gonna give me plenty of extra tile. Well, I want that because if we have a little nick or a bad cut, we've got ample options. But also, we're going to use a couple of these for feet for our board. So let's reset here, trim these down. Since we need to make our cuts as clean as we can, what I'd like to do is we started on this end with our cut. Where I'm going with this is down here as we cut, our straight edge can fade towards or away from us. So let's flip this around. Basically, we're going with the best of the cut. So let's lay two of these out, drop in our straight edge, 
Good, and now with a square, let's trim our end as square as we can make that. Good, okay. So now we're gonna use our two inch straight edge. Let's lay our leather out. Now with our straight edge, square those as best we can across here and let's make a cut. Now, as I go through this second piece of leather, I wanna put my finger over on that to keep that from pulling, okay? Let's do that again. And already I've got 27 and that took virtually no time at all. So let's jump over here and I'm just gonna couple of, cut a couple of extras. Now, in all honesty, we're gonna be wasting some suede here. Actually not. I can always use suede in my shop. And that gives me, I think, about 38 tiles. Good. In fact, I've got one or two where I notice I've got a bad cut. We can toss those. We've got plenty of options. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing with our blue suede. And about 36 of those. Good. In all honesty, it looks like it should take more time to cut these. Five minutes at most, and they look good. Let's reset here. Cut our veg tan. Suede is typically a three to four ounce leather, and at Weaver, our suede is the same thing. We could always go with a natural veg three to four ounce. That would make a nice transition between tile and border, but we're leather crafters. Let's step it up. Let's go with an eight to nine ounce. That's gonna give us a nice tall border. We'll edge that, but also, it's a much more common weight in our shop. Three to four ounce, not so much. So first step, let's get a good straight edge in this. In fact, it looks like I've got one, but when I put my straight edge against that, not at all. So let's always start with a new or sharp blade and our Weaver Select natural strap. Nice. Now on our wooden strap cutter, it's about the best tool in our shop. We've got one inch allotted for our border, but what I'd like to do, let's give ourselves a little room for error. I'm gonna bring this in just under an inch for two reasons. First off, when we lay out our board, it's hard to get that absolutely perfect. But secondly, when we stamp this leather, it's gonna expand a little bit. So therefore, I want, again, just a little room for error. So let's come in just a hair under one inch and let's strap out four. Yeah, how easy is that? Again, one of the most helpful tools in our shop. So on these, we need these at 18 inches long. So let's trim these to size. Good, we've got that. Now let's take a triangle. On both ends, we're gonna mark to cut for our corner. So again, let's be as accurate as we can here. Square that up. Good, and make a mark. Now, if you don't have a triangle, we're simply going the same distance across as down. That's all we're doing. So let's mark all four pieces, both ends. Good, we've got those marked. Let's cut these. Those are cut, good. Let's step over to our stamp table, get these ready to add our stamp design. Let's get the best stamped impression we can. We're going to case our leather. So our first step, let's draw these pieces through our water very slowly. Nice, we've got a good water content here. So let's give these about half an hour. Let these air dry some. While that happens, let's step over to our main table, get our board set and ready to go. For our friends in woodworking, they can take this ball and run with it. For the rest of us, 
I am not a woodworker by any means. But what we've got is just an 18 by 18 inch board. In fact, I'm using subflooring. We can use just about anything we want. But right here, this is going to be our backside. So I've added a wood stain. This is called provincial. We're going to use a walnut die on our borders. That's going to look good. So on this side, we're going 18 by 18. We've got a one inch border all the way around. So our first step, let's find our center line, both top to bottom and left to right. Okay, we've got that. Now let's add our one inch border all the way around. Good, our border's in. So now let's go to our squares. We need to be as accurate as we can here. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna drop my straight edge right on that pencil line, simply because if we're out a little bit, and again on this side we come out a little bit, our squares actually could be about two and an eighth inch wide. So let's get a sharp pencil, put that straight edge right on that line, and let's work our way out both sides, both directions. Good, our board is marked, ready to go. Let's step back over to our pattern table. Our leather looks good. It's certainly wet, but it doesn't feel oversaturated. So we're gonna cover this from anywhere, a couple hours up to even 24 hours. So let's use some of our pattern sheeting. We can absolutely put this in a baggie as well. And I like to lay some scrap suede on this to protect that from light fading, but also to give it a little weight. So let's give that overnight, then we're gonna stamp our design. We've given our leather overnight. Now, this is called casing our leather. We don't have to go this route. We can simply wet our leather, give it about 10 minutes, and then stamp. We're gonna get a good impression, but this is the absolute best way to go. All right, so our leather, I can feel it definitely moist, but it feels like it's starting to dry. It feels good. So let's do this. Let's let this lay out. Give this about maybe an hour. We want this to start to return to its natural color. Then we'll add our stamp design. Our leather looks perfect, I can feel it. It feels somewhat dry, but at the same time, it's got a little weight, it's got a little moisture in it, good. So let's start right here. Let's mark for our stamp design. Now you can go with any stamp pattern you want, make it your own. This is one of my favorites, and we'll talk about this here in just a minute. And I have to apologize. I have dye on my, on my fingertips, but we're used to that. So let's start right here, 18 inches. Let's drop in, in the middle of our strap, a mark right in the center. We just need a small mark there. We're gonna overstamp that. But also, we can absolutely measure this out. But once we get over to our stamp table, it's gonna be relatively easy to get this centered. So in each direction, I want to go one and three eighths of an inch for this stamp design, or 3.5 centimeters. Good, let's stop right there. That gives us a little extra room at the end. And I'm going to do the same thing in the other direction. And one and three eighths, good, okay. I'll do the same thing to the other three. And one and three eighths, good. Let's step over to our punch table, drop in our stamp design. The best advice I can offer if we're gonna tool or stamp is let's do a little test piece first. Let's just get comfortable with the tool, but also gives us a little confidence when we jump over to our main project. So let's start with this tool, one of my all time favorites. We can do so much with this. Now, on a strap this width, it's gonna be relatively easy to line this up left to right. Let's get as close to that mark as we can. When we come back in with our veiner, that gives us a little room for error. You'll see what I'm talking about, but let's do our best to get that right in the middle of our strap. Nice impression, and how easy does that go in with cased leather? So let's go to our next. Good, looks nice already. So let's jump over to a veiner. And I love this design because it gives us almost a paw 
effect when we combine these two stamps. So now I'm going to take my veiner and I'm going to span and bow inside. There's our design, but also it's a perfect example of what I was talking about. If these aren't exactly on that center mark, notice right here, we're perfect. That veiner meets up nicely. Over here, we're a little bit long. We will never see that. Okay, so let's work our way out in both directions. Well, that looks good. Nice touch. Now on our end, how about we just add one veiner on the top only. Well, I think that is going to look good. Okay, I'm going to do the other three. Well, that looks good. Is it perfect? No, absolutely not. But all told, the imperfections, that's the hallmark of handmade. This is obvious that it was not punched out of a machine somewhere. Okay, so let's give these overnight to dry. We need to get these good and dry. While that happens, let's step over and glue our tiles onto our board. We have to lay in 64 tiles. That sounds like a daunting task. Actually, we're just going to work in small sections. So let's start with taking three of our tiles. And let's look at these. Let's just make sure we don't have any major imperfections. Okay, those look good. Now applying our glue, it's going to be a breeze over here, opposite right here. We've got to make sure we don't get glue on the face side. So what we'll do, let's start with our tiles, then we'll come back over and add glue to our board. What I'm going to do with this, let's go with our S18. And let's lay this right on the edge of our table and I'm going to brush my glue off the edge. Okay, that's not bad. And again, let's make sure we don't get glue on the face. Let's set that aside. Do these others. Now let's make sure we get that glue right to the edge and right to the corner. Now I haven't been doing this, but really if you buy a quality suede, the face is going to look just as good as the back, but it wouldn't hurt from here on just to make sure we don't have imperfections on our suede and it doesn't really look like we do. Okay, so those have got glue. Let's start right here in the middle and let's go outside of about six tiles. Well, that looks good. Now, let's give this just about five minutes. Let that glue set. Our glue looks good. What I'm looking for is it appears to be dry, but it is definitely tacky. So let's lay in our tiles, and I guess it goes without saying here, we've got to pay attention or we'll have an irregular chessboard. But let's do our best to lay those right in. Good. Well, those are fitting together nicely, and it feels like we have got a good bond. Okay, I'm going to repeat the process outward. Wow, is this tedious? But all told, we played two good chess matches, and we've already enjoyed this longer than it took to lay in the tiles. But I'm surprised these are laying in very nicely. They look good. Now, big point with the contact cement. We've got to have good ventilation. Okay, so I'm going to lay in this last line. Let's see how it looks. And let's finish on a corner so we only have to meet two sides. Well, that looks good. Perfect, 
by no means. I can see small mistakes here and there, but that looks good. But also too, we're just doing a checkerboard pattern here. Take this idea and run with it. Okay, so last step. Let's take a square or even a scrap piece of leather. What I'd like to do is press along our lines, both top to bottom and left to right. And there we are. Everything feels good. This is beautiful. Okay, let's reset and see this beautiful board come together. We gave our straps overnight to dry. They look good. Now we may need to trim these down a little bit. We stamp these, but let's see what happens. So let's lay this in right on our edge, corner to corner, corner to corner. That is perfect. Okay, how about the edge out here? We could not have hoped for a better fit. This is gonna be beautiful. So right here on our straps, with our groover, I'm gonna set this at an eighth of an inch and I'm gonna do all four sides. Well, that looks good. Nice touch. That's why I use a groover on everything, whether I'm sewing or not. So we're going with an eight to nine ounce here. Let's jump up to a master tool, number two edger, and we're just gonna edge the long sides, the inside and the outside. There we go. Okay, so let's reset here. Let's add some dye. This is actually a tough call. There are so many beautiful dye colors. I'd love to see this in a mahogany. Or for me, a good combination with the blue suede is a light brown pro dye with a medium brown antique. But let's go with our walnut. Now we stained our board, but this is gonna be a classic, beautiful color. So let's run this through our dye. Good, let's let some of that excess dye drain off. And now let's just take a rag and run back over that. In fact, that dye is already wicked in. That looks good, okay, let's do the other three. And our last piece, good. So with our pro dye, we need to give this an hour and a half, maybe, maybe two hours dry time. Then we'll come back, we'll add our top coat, we are close to being finished with this beautiful board. That has dried to an absolutely beautiful leather color. Very nice. Now we're gonna go with a top coat, our leather balm. We probably saw that coming. It's my favorite top coat, but it's gonna darken a little bit, but it's really going to enrich in our dye color. So to apply, I tend to go with two rags. We're gonna apply with one, buff with one. Now to apply, I like a fleece, something that like hoodies or sweatpants are made from. This is gonna hold a lot of leather balm. We can get a large panel, but let's go sparingly with this. We don't want streaks and we don't want bubbles. Those will show up when it dries out. But let's just apply this easily. And now let's come back and force a little bit of that balm down into our stamped areas. Good, okay, one more pass on that. Let's set that aside. Let's give that a few seconds, let that dry, then we'll buff. Good, there we go. So let's step back over to the first one we did. Now I'm just gonna go with a cotton rag, but let's buff this. That is beautiful, love the outcome. Last step, let's add a little leather balm to all four edges. Well, I could not be happier with the outcome here. It is time to put these on our board and see how this looks. For this step, we've got to be very careful. Most leathers have a top grain, and if we get some glue on it, it's just gonna roll right off. Not the case with our suede. We'll definitely see that. We've gone to a lot of trouble to keep this clean. Let's keep that going. So right here with our contact cement, what I'm gonna do is take a piece of our pattern sheeting. 
I need that glue right up to the edge. So let's just drop this in. There we go. Now we can get right up to that suede and let's just go right off our edge. And it wouldn't hurt too now and then to take this and just clean that off. Again, we've got to be so careful here. We've got one coat down. Now, in my mind, in fact, let me clean that off before I make a mess. In my mind, the border is going to get the most wear and tear. So I'm going to give this glue about five minutes. Then I'm going to come back in, drop in a second coat. Then we'll jump over to our straps. And our second coat is in. Good. So let's set this aside on our straps. Again, I feel like these are going to get the most wear and tear. So let's give our glue the best chance of a good bond. So I'm going to take a rougher and let's just rough the flesh side of this along the edges mostly but we could certainly hit the center as well. Now, I don't want to rough this so hard that I make my edges fuzzy, but the reason we're having to do this, a quality piece of leather. That's exactly right. So let's clean this up, add our glue. And again, let's come right to the edge of our table and let's make sure we get that glue right to the edge all the way around. Okay, let's give these, there we go, let's give those about five minutes. I've only done one coat on our leather. I almost feel like that's going to absorb our dye a little easier than the wood will. So let's see how this goes together. Feels like we've got a good bond. Our edges are lining up beautifully. I tell you what, I could not be happier with the outcome here. We've got one more step and this is a nice touch. So let's reset, let's add some feet. Suede is used as feet and padding on all kinds of products. In fact, saddle seats commonly made out of suede because it's got some grip, perfect for feet. Well, we're already there, already cut. So we're gonna use a white glue instead of a contact cement. This isn't really gonna have any stress on it. In fact, the only pressure is gonna be downward pressure. But at the same time, contact cement, it's gonna be hard to get that to hit a small area without it looking messy. The white glue is gonna be fine. So let's start right here. Let's go ahead and add glue just like we did with our contact cement, but let's use a dauber on these. We've got glue on this. Now we can go right to our corner, absolutely. But to me over time, that's gonna start to dog ear. So how about we come in just about a quarter inch on both sides. Let's lay that in. Good, okay, I'm gonna do the other three corners. I feel like we've got a good bond on our feet. All told, that is absolutely beautiful. I am thrilled with the outcome here. But also, good point. All we've done here is cut a checkerboard pattern. Think of what we can do with this idea. So many possibilities, but again, just thrilled with the outcome of that board. I think we nailed it on this project. This board is absolutely beautiful, but at the same time, we talked about so many additional ideas, possibilities, so many ways to go. I can't wait to start another, and I hope you feel the same way. In fact, I hope every game board you make is spot on beautiful, and you have a great time playing games on it. Good luck with your projects.